I've performed my fair share of repairs to cassette players over the years. Some were more successful than others, but none of them were exactly beginner friendly to work on. I picked up another Walkman to fix, and while I feared for the worst, is it possible this one is far easier to get going again than it seems? The portable players I've repaired so far have been higher-end models that focused on sleek designs and compact footprints. This made them very desirable when they were new, but also much more difficult to work on. It's very common to need to replace the rubber belts inside these over time, and in some models, doing so is an absolute nightmare. A new addition to my small Walkman collection is this one, a Sony WM-F45. It dates back to 1986 and is a member of the sports product line, which we'll talk about a bit later. It's overall in decent shape and definitely shows signs of wear, as was typical for models like this. As the belt clip on the back suggests, these were meant to go anywhere, and it certainly looks like this one did. The batteries are installed from inside the cassette compartment, and the door has a satisfying latch that holds it open. The outside of this Walkman may be plastic, but it still manages to feel high quality. I dropped in a tape and hoped that at least there'd be some signs of life. Wow, this one's in far better shape than I expected. The tape played fine for the most part, though I did notice a bit of flutter, which implies the belts have seen better days. The question now was, how do I get inside this thing? I started by removing the screw holding the hinge arm to the bottom casing. From there, I only saw two other screws in the cassette mechanism, so I took them out. I figured this top plastic piece would lift away to reveal more screws to remove, but instead, the entire mechanism came with it. All I had to do was free the side buttons from their rubber covers, then use a small screwdriver to pop the headphone jack out from its notch in the casing. So at least I wouldn't have to try to replace the belts with everything inside the enclosure. But now I was worried that the worst of the disassembly was yet to come. As was typical of mid-80s electronics, there are a number of wires that connect the PCB to other parts of the mechanism, and I really didn't want to have to desolder them if I didn't have to. I found three screws holding the PCB to the frame, and once they were out, I gently tried lifting it up to see what was underneath. As it turns out, all of the wiring runs along just two sides, so it's possible to flip the board over without disconnecting anything. And when you do, the belts are right there and easy to access. There are two of them, one that runs from the motor to the flywheel, and another from the flywheel to the tape spindles. In previous repairs, these belts have often degraded into a sticky goo that's very time-consuming to clean up. So I was especially relieved to find that these were seemingly intact. I bought a set of replacement belts from a seller in Ukraine, and like with a lot of Walkmans, these are compatible across several models. Considering how the original belts have likely stretched a bit and were starting to get somewhat misshapen, hopefully these new ones last at least as long. They were easy enough to install and seemed to fit well. Before I could flip the board back down, I needed to make sure that the switches were lined up with their sliders, otherwise there's a risk that I could break them. Another nice nod to easy repairs and servicing in this model is this, the trimmer that controls the tape speed. On some players, it's a tedious affair to adjust, but this one has it on the edge of the PCB with a corresponding cutout in the case. 
You don't even have to disassemble this Walkman in order to get it dialed in. While I had the mechanism out, it was a good opportunity to take care of some other tasks. The tape head and cap stand didn't look too dirty, but I cleaned them with an alcohol wipe anyway. The inside of the enclosure needed a bit of cleaning, and in the process, I found a tiny spring. I realized that it had come off when taking the player apart, and fits onto the end of the battery door. Working with these springs can sometimes be a fiddly affair, but in this case, it was quite straightforward to put it back where it belonged. The only real bit of difficulty I ran into while working on this Walkman was putting the headphone jack back into place. It fits into its spot in the casing pretty securely, so lining it up while dealing with the somewhat short wiring was a bit tricky. But once I got it, the tape mechanism simply dropped into place and I could put the screws back in, followed by the one that secures the arm. There's a rubber gasket around the top cover to seal the inside from the elements, and it looked like it needed a bit of cleaning. These sports Walkmans weren't completely waterproof. If you dropped one in a swimming pool, you'd be in trouble, but they did a good job holding up against a bit of rain or sweat. And likewise, while they are fairly rugged, they weren't impervious to scratches or scrapes, though I did notice that the plastic film on the volume knob had never been removed. After replacing the belts, did it work any better? Only one way to find out. I wasn't expecting a huge difference, but hopefully things would at least sound a bit more stable now. When you find what we have better hold on tight to it Cause I may not come around again, don't sleep through it I know already what this love's gonna be I just can't wait until you finally get the chance to see Ooh, yeah, And I'm so glad I found you, so glad I found you oh. To my ears, the playback definitely seems to have less flutter, so the belt replacement definitely helped. The frequency response isn't that great, especially in the high end, and part of that could be due to the capacitors on the board needing attention. At the same time, though, these players never really offered the best sound quality since they were meant just for casual listening. This model doesn't even offer Dolby noise reduction. The Sony Sportsline debuted in 1984 with the WM-F5 amid a huge wave of popularity for personal electronics. Interestingly, it launched in a variety of colors, though Sony would mostly settle on yellow for subsequent models. Sony offered different versions of each unit, too. My WM-F45 includes a radio tuner, but a viewer named Jonah kindly donated the cassette-only version. The two are very similar externally and use the same cassette mechanism, but the F45 also offers a switch for optimizing playback of chrome or metal tapes. Both of these models do suffer from a common failure in that the adhesive holding on the clear window eventually fails. And it looks like someone already fixed that on my F45, as suggested by the bit of glue residue visible from the inside. Sony didn't limit the sports models just to cassette Walkmans, either. There were pocket radios, headphones, and boomboxes. The lineup even expanded to include versions of the Watchman portable TV, along with ruggedized Video 8 Handycam models. As the 80s became the 90s, portable CD players were added to the lineup, and later in the decade, the branding changed from Sports to S2, along with a shift in design to primarily white with orange accents. The cassette models gave way to the mini-disc format with the MZ-S1, but that was generally the end of the line. When Sony shifted to producing MP3 players, it dropped the sports name and incorporated models meant for exercise into its main lineup. 
Of course, other manufacturers were keen to capitalize on this market, too. Sony's rival Panasonic launched its own Shockwave series of devices, and budget brands were quick to copy Sony's designs. But the sports line wasn't the only time Sony produced consumer electronics in colorful plastics. In 1988, it debuted the My First Sony series, which was targeted towards children. I like pizza pie. It was a brilliant bit of marketing in that my first Sony implied it wouldn't be one's last. Unfortunately, the series itself didn't carry on for very long, but hopefully someday enough of these will make their way into my collection so we can investigate them further. For now though, these sports Walkman models represent a neat slice of consumer audio history. They came from a time when there wasn't a do-it-all device like we have with smartphones today but also represent an era where, in some ways, product design was much more interesting. With physical audio media making a small comeback, these are starting to see a bit more popularity again. And based on how easy they seem to be to repair, it certainly looks like a sports Walkman might be worth checking out if cassettes are something you're curious about. <laughs>